After over 500 days, my northern forest terrarium is beginning to fail. This rich, closed environment, which is meant to simulate the forest floor, is, for the moment, filled with life, but it has a problem facing it that I don't think can be resolved. This story starts with the diminutive springtail. Springtails are one of those insects that we've all seen, whether we realize it or not, but often I've never thought about because, well, they're usually really small and often appear as nothing more than a fast-moving speck. When this terrarium began, springtails were fairly uncommon. On a given day, I might spot a few crawling around, but that was it. However, about 12 months into this ecosystem's life, that changed. With warming temperatures, the springtail population exploded, and it hasn't declined since. That was exciting for me. These cute little creatures filled the terrain with movement and life, but that should have been my first warning sign. See, springtails are primarily detrivores. They feed on dead stuff, dead moss, dead leaves, dead fungus, and yes, dead bugs. They've earned the reputation of being a cleanup crew of sorts, an essential part of any closed terrarium. But like in any ecosystem, th their population has to be kept in check. But so far, it hasn't been. See, this environment only has two natural predators. The first is the centipede. Centipedes are a common predator for springtails. Here's a shot from a while back of a large centipede catching and running off with a fully grown springtail. But I haven't seen any of those large centipedes lately, only juveniles. And I have no doubt that the juveniles are finding food for themselves. They're finding a way to survive. And in fact, I just witnessed one recently that had caught and killed a springtail. But their numbers evidently haven't been able to keep up with the increase in springtail populations. And that's also true for the rove beetle, another predator in this environment. So no big deal, right? After all, the springtail isn't hurting anything inside, right? Well, that's true, but the explosive growth of the springtail population has been but a canary in the coal mine, a, a harbinger of things to come. In the last few months, the population of other macroinvertebrates has also exploded. Isopods, flat-backed and round-backed millipedes, and even snails have become far more common. I've personally witnessed juvenile examples of each of these animals, so I know that they are breeding, and they're breeding quickly. And at this point, it's far beyond what the centipede population can keep up with. See, like I said, I haven't seen any of the large centipedes in here in quite a while, and that leads me to believe that, for whatever reason, they died. That means that as these other invertebrates grow, most are well above the size any of these juvenile centipedes could manage to kill. Just like in this shot, the centipede is on the hunt, no doubt, but it knows its limitations in that the millipede is too large or too well protected for it to attempt a kill. And I can hear you saying, what's the issue here? More bugs makes for a more lively environment. What's the problem? And at this point, the problem is a problem of food. The creatures inside are slowly but surely eating any and all of the dead plant matter that was present upon the creation of this ecosystem. And at this point, that's mostly rotting wood. But these animals, like the isopods and millipedes, they prefer to not live on dead wood alone. And most of the dead plants are, well, non-existent because they've already been consumed. This means that, at an alarming pace, the creatures inside are turning to live plants, such as this moss, as a source of food. A year ago, e even six months ago, this landscape was lush with many beds of moss. Now, only a few islands remain, with the rest of the moss mowed down to a nub by isopod lawnmowers and is far from healthy in appearance. Exacerbating this issue is the most destructive of the invertebrates inside, and it's one that I haven't even mentioned yet. It's the earthworm. There are several large earthworms in this ecosystem. 
unless they're right along the side of the glass, they're almost never visible when the light is shining. But at night, they surface, and their appetite exceeds that of any other creature inside. They're unable to tear away at the pieces of dead wood. And I think the earthworms have been responsible for much of this loss of moss inside. And like the other creatures, centipedes are a predator for the earthworm, but these earthworms are far too large for any of the juvenile centipedes inside. So where does that leave us? We have a system here that is out of balance. On one end, we have the producers. The, the producers, i.e. the plants, aren't keeping up with the consumers, including the isopods, snails, millipedes, and earthworms. As I can see it right now, the population of each of those creatures is not being controlled by the predators. And as a population of those creatures grow and new generations are born, this ecosystem will reach a tipping point, at which time there will be little to no plant matter alive, and much of these terrestrial creatures will starve. It might not be the end of life entirely in this terrarium, but it'll hardly be a terrarium worth looking at. It's a bleak outlook. But maybe I'm wrong. One of the few success stories as far as plants go, has been this large plant here. For the first year in this terrarium, it showed very little net growth. Some leaves would grow, they'd get eaten, but in the end it was about the same size. But in the past few months, it has exploded in size, offering a food source that might be able to keep up with the growing number of consumers. Much of the previously lush beds of moss are shrinking, but new micro beds of moss have begun to sprout on other surfaces that were previously moss free. And if given a chance to grow, these could be the beginnings of new moss fields that will sustain future generations of these creatures inside. And if these plants can keep up with this population growth for, let's say, another six months, that could give the predators, especially the centipedes, a chance to grow up and to create new generations of their own, bringing balance to this closed off world. Let me know in the comment section if you think this terrarium has a chance, or do you think it will soon begin to die a slow and sad death? And if you're looking for a terrarium that's richer in predators, if rove beetles and centipedes are sort of boring to you, check out this new one that I just created recently. It is filled to the brim with a plethora of fearsome spiders, and I'm really excited to see how it plays out in the coming months and coming years. Take care, and I'll see you next time.